Hi guys, what is up? I'm Carla from Carla's Ceramics and welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video I will be showing you how to make a bird feeder by slab building. I've also made a video on how to throw a bird feeder so if you're more into throwing I will definitely check out that video. But in today's video I will be slab building so without any further ado let's just get started. In this video I will be using this table size slab roller which is quite easy to use to make bigger slabs. If you don't have this you can still make this bird feeder by just rolling out slabs yourself. This one is from Keramic Craft and it's great because you can take it apart which makes it easy to put away. Then I grab a piece of clay and I flatten this a bit because this makes it easier to get it through the roller. I'm doing this on the top of my hand but you could also do this on the top of a plaster bed or a wooden table or whatever. <laughs> Then I place it on top of the fabric and I place a piece of fabric on top of it. So that's in between two pieces of fabric and then I put it through the roller. And then I have this big nice slab which has an even thickness. Then I place the slab on top of a wooden plank. I just do this because I prefer to cut on top of a wooden plank instead of my table so I don't make any scratches on my table. And then I take a piece of paper and I fold this in half and I start cutting out the shape that I'm going to make the bird feeder into. I'm going to make it into a water drip form so I make it pointy on one side and circular on the other side. And I make the bottom quite flat so that the bird feeder can actually stand on its own straight up into the kiln so I can glaze it on all of the sides. But you can of course just make this in any shape you'd like. Then I place the piece of paper on top of the clay slab and I start cutting out the form. I just hold the paper with one hand and I cut with the other hand with a little knife and I just carefully cut it out. And I cut this form out twice because the bird feeder will have two sides. Then I get rid of the excess clay that I don't need and you can of course just use this again because nothing happened with it. And then I cut out the middle part of the piece of paper. You could have done this at the beginning but it is easier to do it afterwards so that the paper stays in the right shape easier. If that makes sense. So I just cut out some clay at the middle and this will actually be the opening that the birds will be sitting in or on. So you have to make this quite big and make the clay quite thin at the sides but don't make it too thin because otherwise the whole bird feeder might become too fragile. And I also kept it a little bit thicker at the bottom than on the top because the height at the bottom is actually going to be the height of the bowl where you will place the food. So you do need some space there for the food. And as you can see I just cut it out of the clay on both sides. If you want to hang this bird feeder onto a wall you could also decide to keep one side closed. But since I'm going to hang it in a tree I like to have both sides open but it's just whatever you'd like. And then I take a new piece of clay and I roll this out in a slab as well. This is going to be the side and actually the roof and the bottom as well of the bird feeder. So it will be placed around the previous pieces we just cut out. So you will need quite a big piece for this. Sometimes it might be necessary to take the clay a few times through the roller to make it nice and even. And then I started blow drying the sides of the bird feeder that I cut out previously. I do this so that I can easily move them without changing the shape. So I'm not making them leather hard or anything, just a little bit drier so that I can easily move them. And as you can see they are still flexible. Here I have the big slab and I start off with cutting one side in a straight line. And then I measure it. I like to measure just at the time that I'm making it and not think it out at the start. I just make a slab, see how big it is and then I decide how big I want the bird feeder to become. In this case I made these sides 10 centimeters wide. So I just measured it and I made some lines at different places and then I made a straight line in between those little lines if that makes sense. <laughs> and I made it into two straight slabs in this way. That's because one big slab would not be long enough to go around the whole bird feeder. But I'll show you how to put that together later on. And then I also straightened the sides. I didn't measure this yet, I will measure this later on. But now I just make sure that it is straight and as big as possible. And same as with the previous pieces, I blow dry this a bit so that it becomes a bit dry and a bit harder. This way it's easier to just move them around without them losing too much of their own shape. And then I start putting the bird feeder together. And then I take one of the sides, I call everything a side, but it kind of is. So I just take this piece and I make sure that it aligns with the bottom part that's on the table right now. And I see how long it needs to be. And I'm going to cut it at the middle, so I make a little line. I just eyeball this, don't measure it. And then I place it flat on top of my table and I cut it at the right size. 
I will now be using this interesting tool. You might not have this, but otherwise you could just use a normal knife. But this tool is made to make the side of a slab into a certain angle. So I took a look at the side of the bird feeder to see which shape it had and it was about a 90 degrees angle. So I used this side of the tool and I just hold it on top of the table and then I move it next to the slab like this and as you can see this cuts away a little bit of clay and makes it into a certain angle. I will be doing this on both sides which will make it easy to attach them towards each other at the top. If you don't have this tool you can just use a little knife and hold it tilted next to a ruler or you could just cut them straight off and then place them next to each other if that makes sense. Then you do it the same way as I did with the heart shaped baking form. I don't know if you've seen that video but maybe you can watch that if you don't have this tool. I'm now going to cut the other side in the right size. To do this I make sure that both sides are aligned with the bottom part and then I use a knife to make a line at the part where I need to cut it and then I cut off the excess clay from the other side. Then I take both sides away and I start scratching the sides. With this tool, it's, a, it's this scratching tool from Xeem Tools. I scratch the whole side of this bottom part as you can see because I will be attaching the parts that were just on top of it. I'm now applying vinegar with a brush. This helps to make both parts stick to each other. I'm only applying it to half of the piece because I will first place one of the sides on top of it and first attach this before I'm going to attach the other one. And then I scratch it again with the same tool as before. And I take the side and place this on top of the part that I just scratched and I make sure that it aligns with the other part and I go over it with my finger a few times to smooth out the side already. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because we will be smoothing it out more later on. And I also smooth out the inside by going over it with the vinegar brush. You could also do this with a sponge but with the brush it's just easy to see what you're doing. Then I scratch the side of the side because the other side is going to be attached to this side. I hope you know what I mean. <laughs> And then I apply vinegar at all of the parts that I scratched. And then I scratch it again with the same tool as before. Then I take the other side and I place this at the right spot. And I again make sure that it aligns everywhere and I press the sides towards each other. And then I go over it with my finger a few times to just make sure that everything's stuck and everything's aligned. And then I go over the top with the sponge. I just go over it quite a lot so that I get rid of any lines and smooth it out and make it one fluent shape. And on the inside I first go over it with a vinegar brush and then I go over it with a sponge. You could also only go over it with a sponge, just whatever you'd prefer. And I also do the same at the bottom of the bird feeder but it's quite difficult to see. And I again do the same thing on the inside as I did before with the previous part. So I take the vinegar brush and just go over the corners to smooth it out and make sure it's nice into one piece. And then I scratch the whole top part of the part we have made already because I'm now going to attach the other side on top of this piece. So I scratch it quite a lot I make sure everything's nice and scratched. <laughs> and then I apply vinegar all over this rim. I apply quite a lot because it's quite a big piece and otherwise it might already dry while working on the other side. So just go over it with a brush and apply quite some vinegar. And then I scratch it again with the tool. I work quite fast here. Not this fast, it is sped up, but. <laughs> and then I place the other side on top of it and I make sure that it aligns with the sides. You might have to press the clay a little bit outwards from the inside and just make sure that everything fits nicely. And then I also put a little bit of pressure on it so that it becomes stuck and becomes stronger and one part. And I also go over the sides with my finger to smooth it out a little bit. And then I went over it with the sponge to smooth it out even more. The seams were a little bit deep here so I took this tool and went over it to attach the different piece towards each other. You could also do this with your finger if you don't have this tool. And then I went over it with the sponge to smooth it out again. And I did the same on the other side. But here I used my finger instead of the tool so I can see how that works. I just go over it a little bit to get rid of the seams and make it nice and smooth. And then I let the piece dry for a few hours so that the clay is a bit drier. If you work in the evening you could also let it dry overnight. But I don't let it dry too long because it's already a little bit drier from drying it with a heat gun. So when it's a bit drier I start finishing up the shape. I'm using this shredder from Mud Tools and I go over the rim on the inside as you can see. And I just take away a little bit of clay. I like to do this to make it a little bit more circular and just smooth it out. I just like the look of it but it's not necessary. If you don't have this tool you could also use a trimming tool and just cut away some clay if you'd like. But you could also just leave it a little bit sharper and just go over it with a sponge to smooth it out just like I'm doing here. And then I turn it around, clean my table a little bit so that there isn't any clay that gets stuck onto the other side. 
and then I start smoothing out the other side. As you can see, this side was a little bit sharp because it was on top of the table. And to round this, I also went over it with the shredder to just cut away a little bit of clay. This is not highly necessary. You could just go over it with a sponge quite a lot, but this will save some time and will just make it nice and round. And I also do the same thing as I just did on the inside. So I go over this rim and cut away some clay. And then I go over all of the sides with the sponge. I go over it quite a lot to get rid of the lines that were made by the shredder and to just smooth it out and make it one piece. So this might take some time, but it, in my opinion, it is worth it to just smooth everything out and make it nice and smooth. <laughs> and I also still had to smooth out the corners on the inside, just like you see in this picture. It was a bit hard to record me doing this because my hand was in the way and otherwise I wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing myself, but I'm doing the same thing as I did on the other side. But this time it was just a little bit more difficult to get into it because the other side was partly closed. So that's also why it is quite handy to use a brush instead of a sponge. This way you don't have to go with your hand all into the piece, but just go over it with the brush. I'm using vinegar because it makes the clay sticky, but you could also use a brush with some water. And here you can see that it is quite smooth after doing this. And then last but not least, I make two holes on both of the sides here at the top and I smooth these holes out by going over it with a sponge. I do this so that I can hang the piece into a tree with a piece of rope. And then I also made some holes in the bottom. This is not highly necessary, but if it rains and some water gets into your bird feeder, this is just an easy way to get rid of that water. And then the piece is finally finished and ready to dry before biscuit fire. For this piece, I decided to glaze it with the glaze Morganite from Bots Pro Glazes. It's a little bit of a pinkish color with some dots in it, which is quite nice. And I just apply this on the whole piece, on the inside and the outside. And I'm applying two coats. If you're firing to a lower temperature, you can also use this glaze, but I would recommend to apply three coats. And I'm not glazing the bottom part so that I can put it straight up into the kiln. And it's important to let the glaze dry in between coats, as always. <laughs> And then when I'm done glazing, I clean the bottom by going over this wet piece of fabric to just get rid of some glaze at the bottom. And then it's ready to go into the kiln for glaze fire. And this is what the bird feeder looks like after it has been glaze fired with some birds enjoying it. That was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it and learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you're going to make this bird video yourself, you're going to post it on Instagram. Please tag me at Color Ceramics because I'm quite excited to see it. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!